Recording in progress. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today and welcome to our session today, Banking and Entrepreneurship in Creating Social Equity. Without any further ado, please welcome our chair, Mrs. Sylvie Asna Prastianawat, to open the session. Mrs. Sylvie, the screen is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon, distinguished panelists and participants. And thank you for sparing your valuable time to come into this session. And welcome to International Economic Association Online World Class Congress. It is actually my honor to chair this session and meeting the great panelists in this session that are Ibu Aswi Manzilati from Universitas Brawijaya, Mr. Wildan Safitri from Universitas Brawijaya, Mr. Maman and Tim from Universitas Pajajaran, and Mr. Martin from Universitas Pajajaran. Well, we have actually 10 minutes presentation for panelists and then continue by question and answer. And from audience, uh, from audiences, I mean, and please kindly send the question through chat room. And then welcome to Dr. Asfi Manzilati. The screen is yours. Thank you, Bu Silvi. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? I hope you are all good in this pandemic time. I would like to say thank you to the session chair, Bu Silvi Asna, and also all the participants in this event today. My name is Aswi Manzilati from Universitas Brawijaya. I would like to present my paper with title Eliminating Banking Intermediation System, Sharia House Ownership in Social System Implication. Please step into the slide, Bu Sylvie. The share screen. Yes, please um, go host to share the presentation. Okay, thank you very much. Let me start. Okay, the next slide, please. As you can see here, there are four points that makes the foundation of this research. First, is about the housing is an urgent matter, whereas its price is becoming more unaffordable. The urgency rooted from the banking of 7.8 million people who is still not be able to own a house of their own. Moreover, the constant increase of land price, especially in the urban area, is pushing house price even higher and high cost of living worsen the already appalling condition. Second, Commonly, the only available option to acquire a house is through bank financing, which makes the third point that there is an increasing awareness to avoid usury in both conventional and Islamic banking, where the latter is perceived is not fully Sharia compliant yet. Therefore, the fourth point is people are now looking for another option to acquire house without banking institution and it must be in accordance with Sharia law. Next, now we moving to a literature review. <clears throat> there are some literature review used in this research, which are the risk of mortgage product comprised with usury risk in both conventional banks, or normal mortgage and in Sharia banks. Murabaha and Musharokah well ijarah contract. 
The second is fundamental transfer method and social system and religiosity with a vis economy as the force of demand. First, the risk of mortgage product comprised with usury risk in both conventional bank and in Sharia bank, with use murabaha and musyarakah wal ijarah contract, which is which I believe that most of you must be familiar with mortgage process in conventional banking. But in Islamic banking, the commonly used contract are murabaha which based on general sale and musyarakah wal ijarah, which is based on partnership and lease combined all together. Second, fundamental transfer method and social system. There is a shifting trend in the relationship between the owner and the user of funds from intermediation through financial institution to direct relationship between the owner and user of funds. Third, Religiosity vis a vis economy as the force of demand. Commonly, economic action is based on rational economic motives. In reality, a decision may be influenced by another factor. In this case, the cost of customer who wish to avoid usury when purchasing a house. Religiosity factor is an important, if not more important than economic factors. Okay. Then we uh, follow the methodology. This research is using qualitative methodology. There, there is phenomenological approach, which focus in Bogor City, West Java, Indonesia. For the data collection method, we use in-depth interview and for analysis method, we use Miles and Huberman data interpretation technique. Miles and Huberman method comprise of data collection, data reduction, data display, and conclusion, drawing, and of verifying. However, it must be noticed that the method is circular, not a sequential, the not a sen sequential one. Okay, now we come to the result and discussion of this research. Uh, on producer side, house producers form partnership or circa with one another to provide financing and supervision system among them. And the contract use the istisna or order contract. It's, this contract is used between producer and consumer to acquire the house. Istisna is a contract where customer order an asset. In this case, it's a house with detailed specification, including its price and its payment terms and condition. Customer pays to producer based on the house development level by producer. For example, customer pay 20% of the price when the house is 20% completed. In consumer side, the dimension of religiosity effort to avoid usury and diversity experience is more important than economic dimension. But still, price, location, and specification of house are important consideration of the customer. Moreover, the direct payment system is used to provide solution for customer to avoid usury practices. And both producer and consumer are agreed to do transaction under social system, trust, mutual assistance, and flexibility contract, thus omit the financing role of banks to provide housing. Last but not least is the conclusion and suggestion slide. For the conclusion, it is uh, discovered that economic aspect price, location, and specification are still important factor. On the other hand, religious aspect is even more important when customer wishes to avoid usury practices to buy a house of their own. And based on that scenario, we recommended that it is necessary to create a financial institution, not intermediary institution, but uh, maybe uh, more simple, in the form of developer cooperation. Why developer cooperation? It is because cooperation system is in line with Sharia law. 
In practice, cooperation represents commercial institution embedded with social values and house developers can focus on building house while finance matter handled by cooperation. That's all the presentation today. I hope this paper help you to all to have a better understanding on housing and usury program. Padrama, I really look for the discussion. Thank you very much, Bu Silvi. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Bu Aspi Manjilati from Universitas Brawijaya about explaining uh, how the <coughs> Sharia system can give a solution for the maybe the young couple to have house or the the housing credit with the equal uh, or mutual mutual benefit each each the consumer and the bank itself so is there any question from the audience you can raise your hand and speak directly or just send the question through the chat room or Buasi, can I ask? Actually, I'm not really um, familiar with the Islamic economic. So, is it any uh, any requirement for us? For example, the Christian people or other other religion can uh, can can they uh, apply in this what shirkah or mudarabah? Thank okay. you. Thank you, Sylvie. I think this uh, we have uh, what it's called it the term rahmatan lil alamin that Islam is not for Muslim only but for everyone. So the producer, the consumer, or part of the contract, it can be everyone. So no problem. This is the system. But support, but. Okay, but suppose that there, the, there is a consumer they don't want to pay just because they they don't they don't able to pay. For example, like COVID nineteen, we all all of us know that economic decrease and we are in difficulties in economic and we cannot pay. So, is there any punishment? Actually, in Islamic contract, there are there is no punishment. For the condition, the punishment is only for moral hazard. Yeah. Okay. That's the point. Okay, so it based on the moral how we can yes. conduct the regulation. To pay. Yeah. <laughs> when willingness to pay is still here, it's okay. There is no punishment. So it's based on actually. So uh, it's a transaction is based on the personality of for each person. Yeah. Is it uh, okay? So it will help. It may help the economic to imp to improve the economic and for the young people or young uh, couple, they can have house with very easy transaction with the equal uh, benefit between consumer and the banking itself. Okay, yes. if there is no question from the audience, we can end Bu Asfi session. Thank you very much for Thank your you presentation. Much. It's yeah. very nice. You open our mind to have house very easy with the economic system <clears throat> transaction. Well, well, uh, let us continue to Mr. Maman, is he already here? So I'm already here. <coughs> ah, alhamdulillah. Okay, Pro, uh, Bapak Maman, the screen is yours. Thank you. Um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So thank you very much, uh, Bu, Is, Bu Silvi. Yeah. So, uh, in this session, we would like to present our research titled The Relationship Among Digital Financial Literacy, Behavior of Saving and Spending, and a process of picture saving and spending among the Nissan millennials in digital era. 
So uh, we have uh, our team also here, uh, Professor Nuri, and then uh, Pak Teguh Santoso, ya, yeah, Ibu Vera, and Pak Ian, ya, yeah, Pak Miliciano. Uh, thank you for our participation coming to this session. So um, today we would like to present uh, this outline, yeah, for the uh, presentation. We would like to start from the mot motivation of this uh, research and then uh, the objective. And we come to literature review and conceptual framework, method, result, and analysis, and concluding remarks. This is more or less the motivation why we, uh, we did this research. Yeah? Uh, if we see from the uh, data, Indonesia has the largest uh, potential e-commerce with the uh, uh, continuing growth yeah, in uh, and it's predicted to reach 75.3% uh, of the Indonesian population yeah, in 2023. And then um, we also see that uh, the development of the digital technology and e-commerce may change the behavior yeah, of consumers in uh, shopping and spending in media and value transaction. And uh, if we see in the, the global financial crisis in 2008, the vintage has shown tre uh, tre tremendous growth and possible disruption to the financial system. And also uh, we see uh, technology, technological innovation and internet uh, penetration are also found to be significant factors for the growth of the vintage company. And the growth of vintage uh, in Indonesia has, has been re re remarkable. But uh, we have yeah, a weak uh, regulation in this uh, digital financial technology. And according to the OCD in 2018, the policymakers and public authorities should be fully aware of the benefits and risks created by this digital financial technology. And then uh, why we should be aware because this, can may, this may affect the consumer and entrepreneurs. This is uh, the objectives yeah, of our research. This research investigate the impact of digital financial literacy on shopping and spending behavior in the Indonesian millennials. And then we also see the relations among the current saving behavior, current spending behavior, and the foresight of future shopping and spending. And then uh, we also connect yeah, the social economic standing with the digital financial literacy. This is more or less uh, the, some, a few literatures yeah, that built our papers yeah so uh, we, we we construct yeah the, the digital financial literacy um, a variable from few literature from UCD, Frasa and Megal 2017 Monica 2017 and Morgan 2019 and also we see uh, the effect of the socioeconomic standing on digital financial literacy, financial literacy from Fisher and Anong, Watson, Atri, and Bilari and Petri that uh, see a uh, significant effect yeah, from social, social, socio-economic standing on digital financial literacy. <coughs> and then uh, how the connection between digital financial, digital financial literacy with saving and spending behavior, we also uh, uh, take uh, few literatures yeah, from Al Alonso Garcia, Comins, Forhan, Keynes, and uh, Watson, yeah, 2003. And also the connection uh, between the shopping and spending behavior with the future yeah, of spending and spending foresight. We also connect with few uh, literature from Penn, Jacobson, Lawson, Hollit, and Neil uh, Bauer. This is uh, the conceptual, uh, conceptual framework that we built using uh, uh, previous literature, literatures. So uh, social economic standing affect the digital financial literacy, and then digital financial literacy affect the saving behavior and uh, spending behavior. And then saving behavior also is a, a function of you know, digital financial literacy and spending behavior. And then the uh, future saving uh, foresight is affected by saving behavior and spending behavior. And then future spending uh, foresight is affected by shopping and spending behavior. Future shopping uh, foresight is also affected by future spending foresight. 
Uh, so we construct all the variables within the latent variables. Yeah, latent variables. So we use the um, complementary factor analysis, and we have uh, five models. Yeah, we have five models. The first model is digital financial literacy is affected by socioeconomic spending, and then the um, spending behavior is affected by digital financial literacy. Saving behavior is affected by digital financial literacy and spending behavior. And then the future spending foresight is affected by spending behavior and saving behavior. And future saving foresight is affected by spending behavior, saving behavior, and future uh, spending foresight. We use the uh, structure equation modeling to estimate the relations uh, between the, among the variables. Among the variables. Um, as uh, I explained previously, the digital financial uh, literacy is constructed uh, using previous uh, literature. Yeah. For example, uh, uh, we have uh, four dimension of digital financial literacy, including knowledge of digital financial product and services, experience in using digital financial product and services, awareness of digital financial risk, and skill in control and managing financial dig digital activities. And then uh, for the socioeconomic standing, we it is measured yeah, by the three indicators age education and income and then uh, we have also uh, 11 indicators nine indicators seven indicators eight indicators and five indicators for digital financial literacy current saving behavior uh, current spending behavior future saving for site and future spending for site uh, respectively yeah. So this is uh, more or less the, our models. And uh, this is the uh, pair diagram that we uh, built yeah, for, for the estimation. So this is the uh, indicators uh, for the uh, digital financial literacy. There, is, there are 11 yeah, indicators. And for the social economic uh, standing, there are three indicators. Okay, um, uh, data, yeah, for the data, we used uh, 527 samples of millennials in Java Islands. Uh, we used the purposive sam random sampling, a face to face interview um, using the millennials for the respondents. And we defined the millennial as the respondent born after uh, 1980 with the age interval of uh, 25 until 40 years old. So we distributed, uh, we spread it uh, 600 questioner, questioners, but only 527 responders filled the questionnaires with complete and valid response. <clears throat> These questionnaires is spread it uh, to the uh, 32 cities yeah, in, uh, for example, in province of Banten, yeah? so Jakarta, uh, Jakarta, West Java, Central Java, and East Java, yeah, with, uh, 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 Respective samples, yeah. For example, for, Ban for Banten, 36 samples from four cities, yeah. <clears throat> no, Jakarta, 31 samples from two cities. Jakarta, five, uh, 58 samples from five cities. West Java, 106, 169 samples from nine cities. And uh, Central Java, 104 uh, samples from five cities and East Japan and 119 uh, samples from uh, seven cities. So there are uh, criteria yeah, for the, uh, to select the respondent. Uh, despite the um, criteria of millennial, also we, <coughs> we apply the criteria where the respondent should also, uh, have, uh, the respondents, has been yeah, using the digital financial service and e-commerce for a few months. Yeah. Okay, um, this is uh, more or less um, the scores yeah, uh, for the variables, yeah, for the variables, uh, for the digital financial literacy and then digital spending behavior. So we have um, uh, the mean, yeah, the mean, and the standard deviation of, of, of the dimension of digital financial literacy, yeah, we have the 
indicator for example for digital financial literacy, knowledge, experience, awareness, skills, yeah. Uh, and then the digital spending behavior, we also uh, see that the characteristic yeah, of the respondent. Yeah. For example, for average spending frequency on digital platform per month, uh, respondent uh, who spend yeah, for four until seven times, um, they are uh, 26 and 9 percent. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is the digital, the digital shaping behavior. So we have um, also uh, the frequencies yeah, of the respondents according to the variables. Yeah. For example, average shaping frequency on digital platform, platform per month um, is in four times, then 9%, about 9%. So this is a pre score of spending shaping behavior. Yeah. Okay, um, this is future sp shaping and spending foresight for the uh, uh, respondents. And this is uh, the result yeah, of the analysis. Uh, if you see from the first models, the digital financial literacy, is, uh, the, the, there is a positive effect yeah, from sales, social economic standing on digital financial literacy. Um, with um, the contribution of 5% in the variation of digital financial literacy. And then um, digital financial literacy also have a, a positive effect on uh, shaping behavior yeah, and then spending behavior. The digital financial literacy uh, has a higher contribution, yeah. Uh, to the spending behavior compared to the uh, shipping behavior. If you see also here from the shipping behavior, we see um, digital finance literacy and uh, spending behavior almost has the same contribution on the shipping behavior. Okay, um, this is the uh, statistical view yeah, of the uh, of each models, each models we have a significant effect yeah, from the uh, social economic standing on uh, digital financial literacy, and also digital financial literacy has significant effect on uh, spending uh, behavior. Yeah. Um, if we see from the uh, fourth model, we can. Uh, We can see that uh, spending behavior and shipping behavior has a significant effect yeah, on foresight of spending behavior, where the spending behavior has a highest contribution yeah, than uh, shipping behavior itself. Yeah. Meaning that uh, future uh, spending behavior is, uh, is still yeah, to have a high connection yeah, with this uh, current uh, spending behavior. Okay, um, this is a future saving behavior. Uh, I think this is the last model. So from the last model, we can see that um, the highest contribution yeah, on the future saving, uh, future uh, saving foresight is uh, the uh, current, yeah, current saving, yeah, followed by the future spending behavior and then the, as, uh, current uh, spending behavior. But the current spending behavior has no significant effect on the future shipping, uh, future shipping process. So uh, uh, we can see that uh, current uh, shipping, yeah, current shipping has, um, uh, is seen yeah, to have uh, the highest connection with the uh, future shipping. Okay. Uh, I think that this is the, the same, yeah. With, uh, Excuse me, two minutes yeah. left. Sorry? Excuse me, two minutes two minute left. Okay, two minutes left. Uh, so, um, from all the 
relations yeah, between the variables, we see only uh, a current uh, spending behavior that has no uh, significant effect yeah, to the saving, uh, future saving foresight. Okay, um, I think this is the same, yeah. Uh, so this is the result and analysis. So as uh, you can see from the uh, models, digital financial literacy has a significant contribution yeah, to the current uh, saving and spending behavior. Uh, the current saving behavior is the variable with the highest contribution, affecting the future saving foresight followed by the future spending foresight and current spending behavior. And then uh, the current spending behavior is the variable with the highest contribution affecting the future spending foresight followed by the current saving behavior. This indicates that there are important links yeah, between the current condition of saving behavior and the future saving foresight. And this applies also to the uh, con connection between current spending behavior and future spending foresight. And digital financial literacy is an important factor to mitigate the current and uh, future financial problems for millennial. And then building a good culture yeah, in current saving and spending behavior will also bring Good culture uh, of saving, saving and spending behavior in the future, respectively. And then um, we also find uh, we also found from the result of the questionnaires that the millennials had already had good knowledge of digital-based borrowing product, but still had limited knowledge yeah, for digital-based investment and saving products. So this become a challenge yeah, for the policymaker to provide an effective socialization and regulations about the digital-based investment and saving product. Okay, um, social economic standing uh, has a positive uh, effect on digital financial uh, literacy and uh, this, this uh, the social economic standing is also affected yeah, by the uh, income, yeah, by the income and also the um, other demographic uh, variable education, for example, yeah. So uh, this, this should be also uh, an important yeah, factor that should be seen, yeah, as a factor that uh, can also affect the digital financial literacy. I think that that's all uh, from us, yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, very interesting research, actually, Pak Maman, uh, talking about millennials. Actually, some research also mentioned that our millennials people are become the biggest consumer in Asia. So it is our challenge, actually, as the university, how to um, educate them, how to give them no advanced knowledge, how to invest, and also in saving behavior, not only consuming. Uh, everything in Shopee or in uh, marketplace. Uh, there is a question for Mr. Maman. It's from Hitzel Jamil. Uh, the researcher took a specific sample of the millennial group. Did this study con consider sample selection bias? That's okay, uh, thank you very much, yeah, Pa Hitzel. Yeah. So as uh, I also explained yeah, in the presentation, we have a criteria. Yeah. To, uh, to choose the sample, yeah. We have, for example, the, uh, so maybe I should uh, see again, yeah. The, okay. So, um, okay. So we have, um, this criteria to select the samples. The respondent, for example, was individual born after the year 1980, and then the age of respondent was in the interval of 25 until 40 years old. And then the respondent has been using digital financial service in commerce for a few months. So uh, using this criteria, we see that uh, this can uh, represent yeah? uh, uh, the, the, the respondent that uh, can uh, represent the millennial as well as um, represent the experience yeah, of the millennial in using the digital financial literacy. Uh, so, so uh, we believe, yeah. So we reduce can reduce the sample selection bias. 
with this criteria. Yeah, thank you, okay. Mr. Maman. Okay, uh, maybe Pak uh, Teguh can also uh, add, yeah, because Pak Teguh here. Yes, yes, sir, please. Also, there is a question from yeah. Ibu Devi Oktabirandi about the research indicator. <clears throat> May I ask about the indicator that Mr. Maman used for the research? I think Mr. Maman already explained it. The yeah, I think. <laughs> Yeah, um, what indicators? Because we have uh, uh, all variable has all variable have indicators. Yeah, have indicators. Uh, so for example, for digital financial literacy, we have uh, eleven indicators. Uh, for DSP, uh, we have this is a saving. Yes, current saving behavior. We have nine indicators. Uh, maybe Pak Tegu or Pak Ian, can you uh, also add? Yeah. Yes, please, uh, Mr. Pegu. Can we add some information if needed? And if also, not, the, then I will solve it. Yes, uh, sir, sir, sir. Okay, I will also uh, for a moment because uh, we I don't I don't remember but by heart yes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> by okay. heart, um, many data. In. And also okay, there is uh, um, insight, Mr. Maman, from uh, Ibu Delia, that, that is, uh, this yeah. is important to note that education must be intensive since it plays a very important role in the digital financial activities of the people. Please appreciate your research, actually. I'm um, sorry? There is an insight from Ibu Delia yeah. that uh, the education must be intensive since it plays a very important role in the digital financial activities of the people. Okay. About, yes, about the millennials knowledge, actually. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that, yeah. Uh, because uh, education and income is a factor affecting the social economic standing and it also affects the um, uh, digital financial literacy. Yeah. yeah. Or okay. Mr. Maman, uh, maybe kindly uh, just uh, please share your email so the audiences can uh, for have further discussion with you by email after okay. this. <clears throat> okay. Okay, this is fine. Okay, I will share the I, I will share my email. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Maman, for the great presentation. It's clear enough for us as the millennial people. As me, also as mill still millennial, right? <laughs> Thank you so much. And then, uh, please, Mr. Wilden, to have presentation. The screen is yours. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you to Sylvie for giving me. And thank you for the committee that accept, for accepting my paper it's about migration in Indonesia. Okay, uh, I'm going to present my paper and let me show you my presentation. And my presentation have a title International Migration and Entrepreneur Entrepreneurship in Indonesia. Uh, I think this is still related uh, with uh, a previous paper with my man more detail, but this is a macro uh, situation about uh, independent and internal migration in Indonesia. And uh, due to uh, population problem in Indonesia, I think migration is uh, one of the uh, strategy for uh, people, for actually for poor people, uh, to reduce this risk uh, uh, income. Yeah, this income. I think a migration is one of the strategy for household and individual uh, for this uh, reduce the risk income. And migration also uh, give opportunity for people who get um, better work, better job, or better income. And I think it is important because during the 
uh, COVID, yeah, this is uh, all of data before COVID, but I think it's interesting uh, because uh, migration is uh, so uh, connected with uh, mobil uh, people mobility. This means if we have uh, high mobility, uh, so uh, high migration. And, and the next, uh, uh, let me show you the unemployment year. And even Indonesia have a good uh, indicator for unemployment uh, from 1919 until 2017. Uh, the 10 of unemployment is uh, decreasing, decreasing. But I think uh, decreasing is not only because uh, education, but also because of migration and better infrastructure, uh, better education, and also better opportunity for mobility, give people have more opportunity or uh, <clears throat> alternative for their uh, income. And also, um, uh, actually in remittance, uh, remittance for Limited is just for uh, international migration. We can see in this uh, presentation in this in my goal and my graphic. You can see that in this picture, you can see uh, from uh, 1983 until 2018, they tend to increase actually in. Uh, the top is 2006, yeah? 2006 is very high and we have a moratorium because of uh, uh, law of uh, protection for our migrant worker in, in, in abroad like uh, Saudi Arabia or Malaysia actually it's, uh, we have a moratorium, yeah? moratorium and also reduce the uh, international migrant and most of uh, country, destination country in, in Saudi Arabia or in uh, East Timor, uh, uh, East Timor, eh? East Timor is also in, in uh, Saudi Arabia and also Kuwait, Uni Emirat Arab, they don't want to uh, ratification, ratify uh, Regulation, yeah, regulation about uh, migrant worker has been uh, if uh, the Indonesian government and uh, reduce the, the, the migrant worker. And also, this is the situation in, in abroad. But situation in in uh, in our country that we can see uh, it should. The sector informal is would be decreased, eh? but the fact that sector informal is increased eh? after 2019, I think this is I don't know. This is because this is something something uh, interesting that uh, sector formal tend to decrease and sector informal uh, increase after 2016. I think. Uh, why this is this is uh, I think we can see in the in the next uh, reset maybe but this is it we just uh, explore um, intermigration international migration and entrepreneurship. Okay, migration labor and development. Okay, I was let me show you uh, migrant labor labor development and how many migrants uh, in abroad in Indonesia from 2012 and 2008. You can see the is dominated by Malaysia and also uh, Saudi Arabia. This is because um, they don't have uh, uh, need uh, they need not need to. I have a skill labor, skill labor. You just have a good physic and and also the language is not so important in this area. This means everybody, every woman can go 
Malaysia and Saudi Arabia easily. Yeah? But um, if we compare with uh, salary, I think Singapore, Hong Kong is better than Saudi Arabia and Malaysia, actually for women uh, migrant. Now, this is uh, very interesting. And as, as well in my research in 2000, uh, 2008, yeah, 2009, uh, 2006, yeah, in Hong Kong, I think Hong Kong and Taiwan is better than in Malaysia at, or in Saudi Arabia. Not only just salary, but also protection for migrant worker. Again, the next uh, Indonesian migration labor, Indonesian migrant labor proportion based on the country destination. I think most of them is women, of course. And and most of them in Saudi Arabia and uh, Malaysia. And next, mm, okay, this uh, okay. The problem formulation of my research in the first this study aim to determine the effect of characteristic of uh, level education and gender of Indonesian American worker on entrepreneurial power after returning to Indonesia. Because uh, most of uh, American worker, they only have uh, opportunity only for, for two years. And eh? after that, they must uh, uh, renew the contract, their contract. But yeah, uh, almost uh, have five or 10 years, they, they work in abroad and they come back and return to Indonesia. And most of them just, uh, they don't have ability for skill for, for work, eh, for work, uh, like uh, for working in Indonesia. Because they, uh, all, most of them is uh, domestic worker. Eh? It's mean as a problem when they come back to Indonesia. It's, it's still my motivation is how to a bit uh, entrepreneur power uh, after they returning uh, to Indonesia after they learn and uh, when they are still living in abroad and when I went to Hong Kong and Malaysia yeah? in Hong Kong they have many organization they uh, also have uh, like uh, uh, the training yeah? training. Uh, before they come back to Indonesia, but it's maybe it's only in Hong Kong. Okay, the little review we use uh, refuse migration theory, this is traditional, also what, what we call new economics of migration. If we compare uh, new economic migration, if we compare with old uh, economic migration, and the new economic migration, they also um, a migration decision not only uh, uh, decide by, by by individual but also by a group people, this family or a connection. But in the odd uh, economic migration, they just only a classic, yeah? classic in the classic theory. They just everything and like a migration is uh, decide by individual, but in a new economic level. Open migration is uh, a decision by a group, people, or a family. And uh, in the little bit, okay, I think that uh, I continue to uh, methodology. And the methodology, the reset, uh, we use uh, quantitative reset and using SUPAS 2015. And this is, uh, and also we only use uh, independent, independent variable is entrepreneurship and independent variable gender and education using uh, 672 or so. Right. This is uh, micro with, and therefore education is gender is uh, in this uh, research and we use the finding, yeah? the finding, this is already mentioned, this is already mentioned that 
Moreton of Mekan from Improving Quality Migrant but Increasing Gap Between Agriculture and Non-Agriculture Also, This is by May 2006. Migration is uh, driven by a large number uh, for sorted and okay, I think the finding is, uh, yeah, this is the finding. The level of division and gender has positive significant relation to the migrant labor entrepreneur uh, after return to Indonesia. This is, um, if we put uh, entrepreneur in Michigan, they must uh, have a better education and when they uh, go to uh, abroad as a um, migrant worker. Okay, this is the finding and the discussion. Sorry, discussion. The worker who uh, male, uh, more entrepreneur, male uh, entrepreneur, and also the education level in one year education attainment will reduce entrepreneur effort by 0 0.0530. This mean uh, in the conclusion, this means we need uh, uh, regulation, maybe how to increase uh, education. Actually, before we only send uh, people with, edu with uh, SMP education, maybe we can increase with SMI education or SMK. This means it is better send the migrant that have uh, skill like uh, why uh, why uh, male is significant is most of men they uh, went to uh, Korea if we see uh, Malaysia Korea most of the migrant is uh, male if we compare uh, Hong Kong Taiwan and other country all of this is a woman in domestic uh, as a domestic worker but in Malaysia they tend to uh, male, like uh, male worker in Malaysia and Korea, eh? when they pack, they still have uh, ability because they work in the uh, manufacturing industry. This means when they pack, they still have uh, ability to put some uh, business in Indonesia. Okay, the conclusion the reset is uh, to make a government regulation or a program related to effort to improve the quality of migrant worker, we can learn from Filipina or China, yeah, maybe in the same uh, worker that have ability, then, then we send the worker without, uh, uh, with a low education. With low education, they tend to uh, low wage, of course, and also low protection. I think uh, with this also important to develop uh, ability for independent when they uh, when they are uh, working in broad. Okay, I think this is my my presentation and thank you for the thank you for this time. Okay, Sylvie. Thank you, Mr. Wilden. It's such a useful and great research about the migration. <laughs> because anyways, in Indonesia, we have many villages and we know TKI is become uh, our pahlawan, yeah? It's our warriors to, for Indonesia itself. But it will be a problem if the, when, uh, when the migrant worker from the outside, um, I mean from the other country, come back to the village, they don't have any... Uh, job they will so they will make the new poverty for its uh, their village itself right so this is the challenge uh, the challenge for us how the how we make how we make the regulation and also how we can encourage the worker the migrant worker once they come back to the village they can quit the new uh, job or they uh, become the entrepreneur so the village itself will be improved uh, very well. If there is any question, please just raise your hand or just send your question through the chat room. Is there a question? Or Mr. Wilden, 
Uh, can I, may I ask the question? Okay. So, uh, if you if you found that the male migrant worker are dominant worker in Indonesia, right? So, how uh, how actually the once the male once the male migrant worker finish their work uh, their their work uh, outside the country and then come back to the village. Actually, what's your suggestion for them or your insight? What they have to do after they come back? They uh, do do they have do they able to work informal or in informal or still in informal? Because based on your data that showed uh, the formal is decreasing and informal sector is increasing. It could be because of the migrant worker. Once come back to Indonesia, they come as the informal worker. I think of course, uh, I think most of uh, migrant migrant returning migrant and yeah, returning migrant is work in informal sector. Informal sector. Uh, most of uh, male worker they work in uh, uh, like a formal sector, like um, in the manufacture. The manufacture is mean they must have ability. Skill, they have skill, ability, and when they come back, they still uh, adaptation, adaptation. Like when they in, like in Korea, in Korea they work in in some manufacture like uh, metal, eh, metal on other manufacture, and when they back uh, Indonesia, they can build some uh, uh, informal industry like uh, they make some. Naive from from metal something like that. they try to modify it and modify it when they come back in Indonesia. But for women, it's a little bit uh, difficult because uh, when they pack a uh, domestic worker, this is um, this very very different different weights. Uh, uh, when uh, all others, uh, this is also. Uh, 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 influenced by, by by culture and culture like a woman most of women they want uh, work in the agriculture sector eh? agriculture sector is mean uh, maybe some some of them is by by land yeah? by land for for, agri uh, for agriculture but the land is uh, in uh, work or invest they, they only invest for land, but the, the, her husband or her, uh, her parent eh, uh, did uh, uh, work in, in this in this area in this in the farm. It means the woman still just uh, give in investment, kind of investment, or most of them is by they have money just for by building house, uh, by house or. Uh, yeah, uh, um, not on not many women they uh, use the money for uh, investment. Actually, in, in like in Trenggale, in Trenggale, Trungakung, Malang, in East Coast, eh, in East Coast area, there are many migrant. Uh, most of them they just buy a house, eh, building house, because this is. Uh, what we call uh, demonstration effect, eh? demonstration effect, and I think this is common sense. Eh? Everybody knows if you go to Trangale or coast uh, East Java coast eh? uh, area, I think you can find a uh, uh, good uh, good house. Eh? This is uh, built by by TKI, by TKI, but written in Indonesia, and. Most of them just try business like make some uh, small uh, small groceries or uh, small and small toko uh, toko kecil gitu ya. This is small groceries, but not uh, used for investment like uh, entrepreneur or something like that. But but I think with uh, we need some. Uh, but in Hong Kong, eh, it's dependent in Hong Kong. They have some organization, and also many people uh, work as reseller, yeah? reseller, reseller. They buy some uh, product from Indonesia, like sambal pecel, plus 
last two days I went to Blitar and uh, and Blitar. Eh? There are many they export many 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 uh, product. And we say, well, we are export to to Hong Kong. We are export to Taiwan. We are export to Malaysia. But they not export. They just sell this product to to her uh, uh, to, to, to the guy, <laughs> but they call it export, something like that. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. well, Mr. Wildan, thank you very much for the answer. There are two questions. It's up, uh, from Ibu Delia and uh, Bapak Ahmad Stolikin. Uh, it's about, uh, do you think, Malaysia, why do you think Malaysia has the increasing migrant labor level compared to other countries? And the question from Bapak Mr. Ahmad Tolikin is about for returning migrants from overseas, do they tend to migrate inter internally, uh, for example, to other regions in Indonesia to find jobs? Uh, for Malaysia, yeah, because I think it's common sense yeah, because of the same culture, same language, it's easy to uh, enter Malaysia, you can go to Malaysia, uh, via Singapore, Batam, or there are many, many, many uh, kids. Yeah? In Malaysia, you can go to many kids, not only from, but the trend Malaysia, not only from, from Java, but uh, most of them are from Nusa Tenggara Barat, yeah? or Nusa Tenggara Timur. There are so many migrants uh, to uh, Malaysia. This is, uh, they have many, many kids uh, at the Malaysia and kids in Medan, kids in Batam, also in, also in uh, former, former kids and also illegal workers. So many illegal workers from Indonesia and Malaysia. But this is still, still, uh, still work because uh, it's like mutually, uh, apa ya, symbiosis mutualism, something like that. Uh, uh, to between Malaysia and, and Indonesia also. And the second question, pardon, can you uh, repeat for second question? Uh, um, for, uh, the question is, for returning migrants from overseas, do they tend to immigrate inter internally, for example, to other region or city in Indonesia to find a job? Okay. Uh, I think they tend to back to Indonesia and they back to their village eh? and not uh, many uh, actually they married yeah? married with other people because of you know and uh, most of my current migrant worker a woman they have uh, now and they have uh, many connections with multi with social media they have maybe find new husband from other area and they go to follow the husband in the area and also trying to find job but most of them they just come back to uh, the village and maybe uh, trying to back to the family and also appearing uh, their children something like that because if if uh, if you ask to uh, most of my grand only okay we work from just for my 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 children, something like that. Okay, Mr. Wildan, thank you very much and thank you for the nice, very nice question. You all can uh, do further discussion through email. I already sent in the chat room. Please double check, uh, double check the email and you can further, uh, do further discussion with the panelists. Well, uh, this is the end of banking and entrepreneurship in creating social equity session. Thank you very much for the time, for very great research and presentation, uh, Ms. Ibu Aspi Manjilati, Mr. Maman, and also Mr. Wildan Safitri. Uh, I hope this session could contribute to the positive and optimist insight for the better economic life. And don't forget to put the money only in your head, but not in your heart. Stay safe and healthy, everyone. See you. Thank you for